Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, this was a request for a hippie gnome. So this is what we're getting into today. <laughs> She's so cute. So, um, you don't need to buy these, but I'm going to put, you know, the glasses and these little buttons that I used when I made my Volkswagen, if you remember. And the little um, emblem, the peace sign. These are just beads with that bead rope stuff that's elastic. And, um, yeah, other than that, you just need colors. So, uh, let's get talking about the yarn so this yarn here is what I used for the skin color and right above here you're gonna see how much that I used for this project and this is loops and threads impeccable and the the color is Heather for the shoes in this video I'm gonna be using this soft taupe by loops and threads impeccable uh, the doll you just saw and labeled in my PDF is a Red Heart Dark Taupe. That's what I used uh, to make her shoes. So, um, different colors, and you can see the different colors. So, this is a lot deeper brown, but I ran out of that. So, um, I listed it in the PDF, but in this video, I'm going to be using the Impeccable. The orange is Loops and Threads Orange Crush, and that is basically for her toenail polish and her pants. This pink, which I do have more of, <laughs> um, this is Loops and Threads Impeccable, and it is called Lippy Rose Bonbon. It's weird. I don't know what part of that is French, but um, it's a rose color. This blue that I used for the hat, for the, just the bottom part of the hat, is Loops and Threads Impeccable. And it's Bright Sky Blue, and it's just for the bottom part of the hat. And this I used for the hat. And uh, this, unfortunately, is a flex yarn. I don't remember who makes it. Uh, I just wrote flex yarn on my tag. So you'll just have to, to look up Flex Yarn if you're shopping from Michaels or something. Um, but it's super duper pretty. And I, I, if I remember correctly, the color was springtime or something? I don't know. I, I don't want to say because I may not be right. And then whatever hair color you're using, um, for my gal here, I use the dark brown. This is just a red heart chocolate or something. Um, for the hair because the person that this is going to has or had even growing up is my sister always long dark brown beautiful hair and she did wear it in braids the one I'm making today is going to have a different hairstyle because um, it's going to somebody completely different so these tiny little glasses are pet glasses and that's what I used. They come in different colors. Um, I got blue on the one that I've made. Then there's yellow and green and then pink. So the pink ones I'm going to use today because it suits the person it's being made for. You can, uh, you know, go check it out on your own Amazon from whatever country you're shopping from. But um, the dollars that you see is Canadian dollars. Just keep that in mind. So everything is going to be cheaper for you. And then, like I said, these buttons, um, I'll put up a picture, too, of... These are actually wooden buttons that I've used. These and all of these are just buttons from Amazon, wooden buttons. So, and then I'll put up 
the picture for this. If you just type in hippie stuff in Amazon, you're going to get all this anyway. That's all I did. Uh, except for the glasses. I had to type in pet glasses. And then whatever beads you want with the little bead bracelet making stuff. And, and then uh, whatever color you want for your fingernails. I went pink because uh, my shirt's pink. So enough blabbing. Let's get into this. So I'm going to start with this. And for everything I'm doing, I'm using my 4.5. So I'm going to start with my skin color because we need to start making arms and feet first. We're building this in amigurumi, so you're going to need a stitch marker. Let's get started. We have to make some toes. So you're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. If you don't like the magic ring or you're not comfortable with it, you can make a chain two and then put six single crochets into that first stitch. And for the next three rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. After the first round, I like to make sure this is nice and tight and tie a knot. But you can do whatever is comfortable for you. That's my three rows. And I'm going to fasten off. You just need a sewing tail. So we make our other three toes. I'm going to do one with you. We're going to make a magic ring of five single crochets. And you're going to do two rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So I'm just going to count to ten. I'm going to do the same thing and be tying a knot. You can fasten off the sewing tail for two of your toes. The last toe you're going to stay attached to it because we're going to crochet from it. So I'm going to put the patterns up. Well, I mean so much of a pattern. But <laughs> so go ahead and make your other two toes and do not fasten off the last one. So I'm on my last toe. I am going to stay attached. So I'm just going to protect my loopy loop. So 
we kind of have to sew everything to the toe. So first let's start with our little toes. So I find two stitches. I'm just going to go, well there's a stitch and then I'm going to skip that one and start into this stitch when I start to sew. You can you can sew wherever. I'm not telling you where to sew. Just grab two stitches and sew them together. Forget to make a knot. I'm just going to snip my tail off a little tiny bit. Just so it's not in my way. So each toe got stuffed with a with the tail with a magic ring tail so that's about as much as I put stuffing in there My straggler in the way. I'm very awkward today. Not sure what's going on. So once you get your three toes together, you got to sew this. So I almost called it a thumb. Sew the toe on. So you can make the foot the same way for left or right. You just got to turn it upside down for for the other way. That is it. So once we're done that, we've got all of our toes all sewn together. Go back to your loop here. So we're going to start making the foot. So I want you to do one single crochet in each stitch and you should get 18 stitches. We're going to do five rows of that. So that's my five rows. Isn't this super cute? I love the feet. Anyway, um, when I was designing this, I was giggling all the way through designing these little feet because they're just so cute. And then, of course, when you get nail polish on them, that's what they're going to look like. And then the sandals and everything. And it was just, I just had so much fun designing this little guy, gal. Anyway, so your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 15 stitches. That's number one with your marker. Let's get my counter out of the way. This is my four single crochets, and then I'm just going to do a regular decrease as opposed to an invisible one and repeat. So 
So you should have 15 stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So your next round is going to be another decrease round. You're going to do three single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 12 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets, and then your decrease. Repeat. For the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So that's my four rows. This is what your foot should look like. So I'm going to fasten off and then stuff this guy and we're just going to cinch it closed. So you need a singeing tail. That's about it. So don't put a whole lot of stuffing in this. Remember this guy is just a little tiny foot. So I didn't try to shove it down into the toes, don't want anything into the toes. So I'm going to put the pattern on the screen after we cinch it for you to make your other one. You just got to remember to stuff them the same. My other one's already made obviously for the video. but. Um, We are sewing a leg to this, so make sure this this end part is stuffed pretty good. You don't really have to worry about this part because this is just going to be sitting inside of a sandal. But this part here is where we sew the leg onto. Now the legs aren't stuffed other than the bottom of the leg for sewing. So that's what I want you to do is more concentrate on this end. So um, I'm going to cinch mine closed. I think it's full. So we're going to go in the front loop and out the next front loop, just like that, all the way around. Now before I pull this, I just want to make sure my feet are going to be stuffed the same. I think, I think my other one's stuffed a little bit more. It's kind of important that your feet, <laughs> that your feet are the same size. So once you have it where you want it, you can pull up across. And I know right now you don't have another foot to compare it to, so you will though, and you'll have to make sure you do all this. So go down into this bump and weave. It kind of will pull, help pull this bump down. But once it's in the sandal, you're not going to notice it. And you kind of can't get away from something like that. So 
So this foot can be either big toe over here or big toe over there. It's completely up to you. So now I'm just squishing my stuffing back up to the top where I need it to be up here. So my big toe is over here, so my other big toe is going to be over there. So these are my two feet. And if you're using orange, let's put some nail polish on this before we continue. Because <laughs> it's fun. So if you're using orange, get, I mean, whatever color you're using, just kind of grab a piece. So my toe is over, it's got to be on this side. Yeah. So just make sure you, when you do your other foot, you are putting it on the right side of the toe. And then I just went back and forth with my with my yarn a couple of times. I think the big toe I did three times, and then my other toes I just did twice. Anyway, you get the idea. There's going to be a couple I got to fix. I got to fix this one and that one off camera. But that's how you do the nail polish anyway. But I got to fix. I got to fix that. It's not good. It looks different once there's a sandal around it, but um, we'll just, we'll just start the legs first, and then we'll worry about the sandals. So um, we start the legs with this color, and then we change to whatever pants colors that you're using. So. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do next. So we're starting with the skin color, and the skin color part of the leg is the only part we're going to stuff, because like I said, it needs to get sewn. This needed to be stuffed well, and then the end of the leg we're starting now needs to be stuffed well. But it's only going to be the skin color. The rest of the orange part of the leg, well, mine's orange, uh, will, will not be. So after I'm done with the legs, I'm going to put the patterns up on the screen for you to make your second leg. And then we'll meet back here to start the arms. So this one starts with a magic ring of six single crochets with your skin color. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So starting in your next stitch, that first stitch is what gets the marker. And then stitch number two can go into that same space. And two single crochets in each space all the way around will give you 12 stitches.
For the next five rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. I'm going to weave in my straggler at the back here. And then we're going to change to orange. So this is my last stitch, this is my fifth row, so I am going to orange, so whatever pants color that you're choosing. So I tie a knot here because I don't like to weave, I feel it makes one side thicker than the other for any newcomers that wonder why I do this. So like I said, we are only stuffing the um, skin color part. We're not stuffing the orange part. Sorry, that's my talk. So I'll make sure this part is stuffed pretty, pretty good because like I said, we're going to be using this for the sewing part. So with your orange, I just want you to put one single crochet in each stitch for the next three rows. You should still just have 12 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my three rows. I'm still just putting stuffing in my um, my skin color area. I just really want to pack it down and make sure it's nice and strong. But again, I'm not stuffing the orange. So this next round is going to be done in the back loops only. The reason for this, these guys right here, these back loops, is because I want to leave all these front loops exposed so we can put the little frillies on so that's why we're doing the next row so if you don't want those little frillies down there you don't need to worry about doing the next row but I'm going to be doing one single crochet in the back loops That is it. You still have 12 stitches. We're going to work into the full stitch for the next 14 rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my 14 rows. You can fasten off. So we should have 18 rows of the orange. And you can fasten off. We're going to um, whip stitch this. So you just need a sewing tail and a whip stitch tail. Before we whip stitch though, the none of this gets, this is the only part that we um, 
stuffed. And that's going to be what we, we mattress stitch to our foot. So we're not going to whip stitch this yet. But just make sure that this is on a side when you're... I mean, you could always pull a few stitches out if you don't get this straight. But that's the first thing that I want you to do is to mattress stitch this. So we take a piece of yarn and I want you to put a uh, slip knot on one end. And then on the other end, that's where your needle goes. So I'm not really here to teach you how to sew, but not this row, but this row is what we're going to use the posts from to do a mattress stitch. And you can, you can stitch any way you want. If you're a sewer and you know what you're doing and you want to, you know, knock your socks off, do whatever you want to do. So go through the slip knot you made so we can make a knot here. We're attaching and then I choose the mattress stitch because number one it's easy for me because I'm not a sewer and um, it uh, it's a good hold so again make sure this is on the side so I've attached here I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up some stuff from my foot. So I'm kind of where I cinched, but I'm going to obviously not stay there. And then after that, I'm going to grab another post from up here and I'm just going to alternate back and forth. I was going to grab that. So I'm going to kind of pull as I go just to make sure that I'm in a good spot. So once I get a few, I'm going to pull tight just to make sure I'm in a good location. So if I have extra, I usually go around a second time because now I know that I can pull over here more. So I'm going to go up higher and then out more just for this back area. So I don't have to continue to keep going. I just wanted to get that back area. So I'm going to tie these two together. And then weave them. And then right here where we did our back loops, um, we're just going to take our orange and we're going to twist it around our hand a few times. And then you can just cut that off.
And then you take your needle, or your hook. We're gonna fold this in half. You're gonna find your front loops that we left exposed. And you're gonna pull that through, yarn over, and then pull through to make a knot. And that's how we're going to attach our little frillies into every single stitch. And if you wanted it real nice and thick, you could always put two in that space as well. I just did one in each space. Don't worry about how long it is or anything because we're going to trim it after. So there's a gap that you're going to have in between your front loops and I just went onto the post there and then you can just trim them wherever you want them to be. we go so this up here we're just gonna whip stitch this And there is our foot and our leg. So I'm going to put the pattern on the screen and um, you can get your other one done. And then when we meet back, um, we'll start doing the hands and the arms and the shoe. That'll be the next thing that we do. So let's get our brown and we can get our sandals done. So we're going to start our sandals with a chain nine. And then we're going to do seven single crochets.
That is seven single crochets and then in this last stitch I want you to put six half doubles. We're going to follow this curve around and we're going to work on the other side of this chain. That's what is known as working in the round. So pull your slip knot nice and tight and starting in this very first stitch next to your slip knot you're going to do seven single crochets. Try that again. So I am weaving in my tail at the back. That's my seven single crochets. I'm going to cut this off at the back because I weaved it in, so I'm going to get rid of it. So for round two, I'm going to have you mark off this first stitch. So round two, put your first single crochet into this first stitch and then put a marker on it. You're going to put two single crochets in the same space, but I want the markered one to be the first one and put stitch number two in that same space. Next I want you to do a one single crochet increase two times. So that's one single crochet and then an increase. That's one time. Another one, one single crochet, and then your increase. So an increase is two single crochets in the same space. That's the second time. And now I want you to do three half doubles. In the next four stitches, so the four stitches along the top here, I want you to put two half doubles in each of them. And then I want you to do three half doubles. And then I want you to do one single crochet increase twice. And in this last stitch I want you to do two single crochets. So we just repeated exactly what we did on the other side. So in your first stitch I want you to put two single crochets, but after the first one, that's where the marker goes. And then I want you to do 11 single crochets across. So these next six stitches that go all along the top here, I want you to put two half double crochets in each of these six stitches. And then I want you to do 11 single crochets. And in your very last stitch here, I want you to put two single crochets.
So your next round is going to be, your last round will be in the front loops only, these guys. You're going to do one single crochet in each of these 38 stitches. And then we are done that part, and then we'll have to do the bands. So front loops only. So this is what you should have. This is your sandal. So you can fasten off. We're going to build the other part separate. So we, this is just a sewing tail you need. But this is how you're slipper is going to be, or your sandal is going to be. So the strap that's going to be uh, not the toe strap, the other strap, the strap over here, that's the one we're going to make next. So I just want you to chain eight. You're going to do seven single crochets back up. Chain one, turn your work, and do another seven single crochets. And that is it. You can fasten off. You're going to need a sewing tail. For both ends, I guess I should have said, make sure this is decently long. So your foot goes in your sandal. This goes back here at the back and make sure your foot's in the right spot. Not that it's going to hold your foot down or anything, but so you got a couple of stitches to do. Get the orange in the way. Make your knot. So when I weave, I went right into the foot to do it. Just so that your sandal doesn't flop off all the time or anything. But you can do whatever you want. And then we just sew the other side on the same way. So 
So that's the back part. Squish my toes together. So we're gonna do now the front part. And it's a little different, it's a little bigger. So we're gonna chain nine and we're gonna do eight single crochets for two rows. So make sure your tail's long. There we go. So go ahead, I'm going to put the pattern up for the sandal. And you can go ahead and make your other one. And then that's going to be the end of chapter one, I think. I think that's been long enough. And, uh, so when we come back, you're going to have both your sandals done and your and your stuff all together and we'll come back and uh, start the arms and probably get the body done and it's probably gonna be three chapters because the hat's pretty long it's a pretty big hat it's pretty long so um, I will see you in chapter two Hi guys, welcome back to chapter two. So we're going to start with the arms. Now, 
the hands are built the same but the arms are built different because one of them is short so we build it the same we're just going to sew down these two fingers and then the other one is a normal length so but they are pretty quick so get your skin color i'm still using a 4.5 and the first thing we're going to do is the thumb so we want to do a magic ring or however you make that you can do a chain two and put everything into the first stitch All I want you to do is one single crochet in each of these six stitches for three rows. So instead of using a stitch marker, I'm just going to count. After my first row, I like to make a knot at the back and... So that's my three rows. I'm going to fasten off. You just need a little tiny sewing tail. So that's my thumb. So we can move on to fingers. Now I did three fingers. I did three fingers on each hand. So we're going to start with a magic ring. And you're going to do five single crochets in the center of this magic ring. And for the next four rows, four rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each of these five stitches. So that's my four rows. I'm going to go in and fasten off. So you have to make three, um, 
Let's put the little sewing tail again. Um, you have to make three fingers for each hand. But the last finger you can't fasten off of because we're going to crochet the hand from that. pieces for my tail. So, um, go ahead and make your other two fingers, but don't fasten off the last one and I'll meet you right back here. So I am back with my last finger. I uh, just got to straighten it with my hook. Um, so I'm not fastening off my last finger. And I'm going to take my other two fingers and I'm going to sew them to this finger. So we're only starting off with fingers first. We're going to sew the thumb on after a couple of rows. So just worry about your fingers. So this is going to be my first stitch with my marker. So I'm going to go into this next stitch to start sewing. And I'm only using two stitches per finger. Just because they're super duper small. I do not stuff my fingers, but if you want to stuff your fingers, you can go ahead. So that's my three fingers. Uh, get my scissors out of the way. The first two rows that you're going to do are just going to be one single crochet in each stitch. And the magic number is 14. So you have to get 14 stitches per row. So if you remember, I left one here. So for my marker, and I left one before I sewed it in each spot. So once you have your two rows of 14 stitches, now we're going to sew the thumb on. So this works the same for both hands. You can just flip them around. It's just a matter of how you're holding it as you're making it. So this is the side that my thing is on. So I'm going to have to go over here, find my two best stitches to use to sew my thumb on. So I use the front stitch. I found my middle and then I use the front stitch. When I make my other hand, I'm probably going to use the back stitch. That's the only thing I'm really going to do different. And I only say that is because that's what I did with my other doll and the hands seem to turn out good, like perfect. 
So now that my thumb is sewn on, the next row is going to be a two single crochet decrease all the way around and that's just going to be to help shape it a little bit. I'm going to try to stick my straggler down in there. Because this can be quite awkward when you got fat fingers. So two single crochet decrease will take you down to 15 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then the decrease, I'm just doing a regular just because it's so small. And it's just going to be awkward to do a any anything else and then I jump into the thumb area So, because I managed to do a decrease here, and I did a decrease here, it pulls my thumb up into position like that. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So that's what your hand should look like. Well, a little more in position with your thumb. So let's stuff this a little bit because we're going to decrease again. So just a wee tiny little bit. We don't want to put a whole lot in here. We certainly don't want to put a whole lot. We don't want any in the fingers. Well, I mean, I don't. You can do whatever you want. So, our next round is going to be a decrease round, like I said. And we're going to do a three single crochet decrease, and this will bring it down to 15, or 12 stitches, sorry. We're at 15 stitches. So bring it down to 12 stitches. So that's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. So we're going to increase. This will be the wrist area. So now we're going to increase a little bit for the arm area. So this will bring it back up to 15 stitches. So that's number one. That's th three single crochets, and then your next stitch will get the increase of so two single crochets in the same space.
So I'm going to put a little more stuffing in this. For the next seven rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my seven rows. I'm going to fasten off. So this is the short hand. So you need a whip stitching tail and a sewing tail. So let's stuff this and then um, we'll do the nail polish, the beads, So you may want to adjust the stuffing after, we won't whip stitch it yet. So these beads, you don't have to do a bracelet. She is hippie. <laughs> so, I mean, it's completely up to you, but I, this um, stretchy, shiny, elastic stuff, you can just buy at the dollar store. That's where I got mine from. So make it, I don't know. You're probably going to cut off the excess anyway. And grab some beads, and I'll meet you right back here. So, I've got a few beads going on. I just put, uh, I know i got some noses and stuff in here, but I just put some beads in here for just a holder. Um, so, I'm just going to kind of mix the two up, I think. You just got to make sure the hole's big enough, obviously, to go... through that. don't really need to. My holes are big enough that I can just put stuff on. So my last one um, is tight. I can't see it. The last one is tight. Super tight on here. Like I mean it's stretchy obviously but um, you want the beads together because you don't really want to see that pink if you can see it you don't want to really see that through but again it doesn't really matter you can do whatever you want but you've got the hand to know to know how So that's probably good enough for me. And you can make as many as you want for your hand. And then we we'll just put it on before we do anything, just so you know that you know, it's decent. So, um, we need another little piece of the same color. But let's do our fingernail polish first. This is going to be used to sew down the thumb and the finger so that it's giving the peace sign. So, but let's do our nail polish first. So I'm using pink just because um, my top is pink, but you can use whatever color nail polish you want. And we just do the same thing that we did with the toes.
know. Now that my fingernail polish is on. We can make a slip knot on this one end. I'm going to take the thumb and the pinky. Well, first, I'm going to attach. There we go, our peace sign hand. So we can whip stitch this end shut. And then I'm gonna put the patterns up for the thumb and fingers and I will meet you back here and we will build the second hand. So I'm back um, with all my fingers. So this is going to be built the same as the other one, but instead of seven rows, we're going to do 12 rows. So everything is exactly the same. So if you feel like I'm whipping through this part, I probably am. So sew all your fingers together. But it'll go pretty fast because, um, you know, we've already done this, so I'm not really, don't really have to talk you through it. So once your fingers are all sewn together, your first two rows are going to be one single crochet and each of what should be the magic number is 14. So we're going to sew the thumb on. So once the thumb is sewn on, we do a decrease. And we're going to do two single crochets and a decrease.
So your next two rows is going to be one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 12 stitches. And then you're going to follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 12 stitches. Next round is going to be an increase round. You're going to do three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 15 stitches again. So for this hand, for the next 12 rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So PDF users, you're going to see it say second arm, make thumbs, fingers, make hands the same through to round 9, and then 9 to 21 is your 12 rows. You'll see it just under the um, first pattern, in case you're looking for it and you don't know where it is. So that's my 12 rows I'm going to fasten off. Um, so you just need a whip stitching tail and a sewing tail. So, um, we can do nail polish on here. We just got to make sure the nail polish is going to be on the right side. So, um, this one, the thumb's over here, which means it is the left side of the body, if I'm in the body, the right side if I'm looking at the body, and then this thumb is over here for this side of the body. So we got to do, I have to do the nail polish on top here. So we'll get that done and then you can make another other beads if you want. Another bracelet or two. I'm just going to fast forward through this since we've already done one so we can get on with the video. So we're going to start making the body now. So I'm going to start with my pants color, which is orange. And I'm going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So 
So after your first stitch, that's where the marker goes. <coughs> and then stitch number two can follow in that same space. Two single crochets in each stitch around will give you a total of 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. That's one single crochet and then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. Next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 36 stitches. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 42 stitches. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 48 stitches. So your very last increase round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase. So the reason I made her a chunky monkey is because gnomes are porky. The original picture that I was sent, um, as because this was requested by Cynthia, um, and the original picture that was posted on my Facebook page, the gnome was um, skinny, <laughs> er, skinnier. Um, but I, I like my gnomes a little bit porky, so. The last round is seven increase, and this brings you up to 54 stitches. That's as far as I went.
So that's what you should have, 54 stitches. So we're going to start building up now. We're going to do four rows with our pants color, and then we're going to change to our skin color for a short little wee bit. And then we'll go to our top because she's kind of got her little crop top on. You know, she is a hippie. So for the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 54 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my last round, this is my last stitch. I'm going to change to my skin color. We're not going back to the orange, we're going to our shirt color, which mine is pink. You know, unless unless your your shirt color is the same color as your pants. So um, this round, we're going to be working in the back loops. It just gives it more of a defined kind of a a look. Like these are actually pants. This is actually skin kind of a look. <laughs> So that's the only reason I did it. If you do struggle with the back loop, I mean, it's not necessary. It just aesthetically looks better. Later on, when we do back loops, you're going to have to because that's how we do the tassels for the shirt. But this one is not super important. But one single crochet all the way around in the back loops only. It's a difficult last stitch. So for the next five rows, I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these full stitches now. And then we'll switch to our top color, whatever color you chose to do your shirt. So this is my fifth row. I'm just coming up to the, my last stitch where I'm going to change colors to my shirt color. So again, my shirt color is pink. So for this round, we're going to be doing the first round in the front loops. Again, it's only for aesthetics. This one is only for aesthetics because we want to make it look like a shirt over the skin. So I did my first round in the front loops only. And then the next round after that will be in the back loops. And because I need the front loops from this row <laughs> to attach all the frills. So that's going to be the first couple of rows that we do. So this first one is front loops only. And again, this is only for aesthetics. If you don't want to do this, you don't need to do this. But you will need to do the next row.
So your next round is going to be done in the back loops. So now these we have to do because I need all these front loops to put all these tassels on. So at this point I used a pattern stitch that's very vague, if my camera will focus, there we go. So I used a pattern stitch that was actually quite vague that you can decide whether to use or not to use. Um, it's completely up to you. So all my pattern stitch is is a one single crochet and then a half double alternating. So we'll start with a single crochet in this stitch and a half double in the next stitch. One single crochet in this stitch, half double in the next stitch. That's all I did. And I did this for the next four rows. I alternated. And this pattern is very forgiving, so if you accidentally put two single crochets side by each, it won't be noticeable. And you can start stuffing this at any time. And for newbies, if you get lost and forget which stitch you're on, a half double will have three loops here, whereas a single will have two. So that's how you know where you're at. And when you do something like this, it has this sort of an effect. So it's very vague. It's a very vague pattern, but um, it's a pattern nonetheless. So that's my four rows of my pattern stitch. We're start decreasing. I've already started to stuff mine a little bit. And we're going to do a seven single crochet decrease and this will bring you down to 48 stitches. So we're just regular crochet now, no more pattern stitch. The next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 42 stitches.
So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 36 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease, and this brings you down to 30 stitches. So you should have 30 stitches. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. I'm going to just continue to stuff mine before I continue. I'm going to continue to stuff mine before I continue. So mine's pretty porky. You don't have to stuff yours the way, same way I'm stuffing mine, but I think a gnome should be a little porky fella. They're so cute. So that was my two rows. This is what you should have at this point. So we're going to continue to close up the top. So we're going to do three single crochets and a decrease. This will bring it down to 24 stitches. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So right now we're just building the part that goes underneath the hat for the hat to sit on. So the top of her head or <laughs> I guess that's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease. So let's bring it down to 18 stitches. So you should have 18 stitches for the next two rows. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches.
So your last round is going to be one single crochet is in a decrease and this will bring you down to 12 stitches and then we're going to cinch from here. So I just want you to make sure that this part, you know, stuffed as well as you could stuff it, but try not to overstuff it. You don't want to see your stuffing through your yarn. So that's one single crochet. So we jump right into our decrease. There we go. You can fasten off. So you just need a cinching tail to close it up and enough to, you know, to weave with. So let's finish stuffing this. I really need this. Make sure this is all stuffed decently. Um, we're going to kind of tack the hat down to this area. so. So I want you to go in the front loop and then out the next front loop, in and out, all the way around. And then you can pull and then pop across the hole, go through your loop. <laughs> Might help if I'm a little bit more on camera. I'm going to go in the other direction. I always do it twice. And I also always wiggle my yarn because I feel like it ties it down pretty good. So that's what it should look like. This little, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. This little, <laughs> I don't even know what it, I don't know what kind of shape this is, but. Anyway, so I'm just going to weave in and out, back and forth. And that's our little gnomey body. So you can still move your stuffing around if you want to push it up a little bit. And there we go. So that's the kind of, that's the shape that I've got. Um, so right now before we do anything else I think um, putting all the little frills on. Come back down here. I just think before anything else gets in the way like arms, noses, stuff like that. All these front loops that we left exposed in this round. This is where we're going to attach all of our little frillies. So I'm going to get my pink. So I'm just going to take my four fingers, I'm going to spread them out and I'm just going to wrap. When I've guessed I have enough, I'm going to cut the bunch and I'm left with this. So um, you're always going to have a short piece too. Well, I do anyway. You may or may not have to do this a couple of times, but let's find our jog and let's start there. So you're going to take this and you're going to fold it in half. Let's start where we jog. So there's my top loop and my bottom loop because we work in a spiral. So I will show you what to do in here to make it look even. 
But first you're going to insert your hook into the loop. You're going to put your little piece on the end of your hook. And then you're going to pull through, pull up a bit, yarn over and pull through that loop that you just made. And that's all we're going to do to attach all these frills. So I just did one per loop. I didn't go above and beyond. So I'm on my last one here, but I want to, um, I didn't do that very well. So right here where the dog happens, I just like to go in and grab that post that's in between and put my last piece in there because it makes it to the eye. We're kind of manipulating the eye at this point. It makes it look a little more even than it would have been. I mean, you can see a little bit of a dip down, but aesthetically to the eye, if you didn't know it was there. So you can leave these fringes as long as you want. Um, I was alive in this era, so I wore a shirt like this. And I got to tell you, they were different lengths, different shortnesses for the frills, different cropping for the top, like different lengths. So, I mean, you can you can do whatever you want. I'm, I think I'm going to cut a little bit off because I don't want it hanging quite that low for me, but it's completely up to you. So I think what's next is getting the nose on. I don't want to sew the arms on yet because we know we need to make a decision on where they're going and stuff like that. But I think um, getting the nose done, putting the nose on will give you a better idea where your arms are going to go. In the meantime, we can sew these feet on because they're basically, you know, going to go on on either side of the magic ring, I would imagine. That's where people would normally sew their legs on. So it's just a, just a regular whip stitch. Now you can set your guy down to see where exactly you want him. We're going to come forward just a little bit, but it's either still going to be on either side of my magic ring. It's just going to be forward a little bit. I like to poke down into the corners. Because I hate the squared off look, so I generally do something like that just to make it look better. Make a wee little knot. I make another wee little knot. So I'm going to pop out into a specific hole back here, like make sure it's a whole hole because we'll pop out with our other leg.
There we go. So now that my feet are on, everything else just follows suit. Now I know where I'm kind of putting everything else. So I think the next thing we're going to do is make uh, the little nose. And then we'll line the nose up. And then once that's sewn on, we'll have a better idea of where our arms are going to go. So this nose starts with a magic ring of six single crochets. So your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around, giving you 12 stitches. So your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. So you should have 18 stitches for the next three rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And then that'll be it. That'll be the nose. So that's my three rounds. That's what it should look like. You can fasten off. So this will get stuffed. We sew it on open and uh, it gets stuffed, you know, part way through. So once we sew this on, we'll have a better idea of where we are putting the um, the arms. So um, one, two, three, four, five. I did mine about two, three, four, five around here, about the fifth row up from the bottom of the shirt. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so the bottom is on this row. So if you count the frills and then this, two, three, four, five. If you don't count the frills, again, just counting this, it's the fourth row. So I know I just counted that super weird, but yeah. So, I'm going to get my long needle here. So, I'm going to sew about three quarters of the way around and then I'm going to put stuffing in it. And this leaves plenty of room for the hat and the glasses. And a better idea of where we're going to sew our arms on.
So now that we have our nose on, then we have a better idea of where to put our arms. So this guy, you kind of got to sew on like this. So this guy's weird to sew on. So let's see how low I did my other one. So my other one literally is right down here by the, the frills, the bottom part of it. So I mattress stitch the first little bit and then I hold it up and I mattress stitch the other part just to keep it in the shape that I need it to be in. So now you got to do the other side as well. So I went pretty high up doing the mattress stitch on my hand just to keep it in that position. So, it's weird, I know. And I'm not a good sewer, so I'm probably the wrong person to take lessons from. <laughs> I'm here to teach how to crochet, not how to sew. But it is what it is. It's a strange way to sew an arm on, but at the end of the day, if you can get it done, it's super duper cool given the peace sign so and then the other arm is easy because it's just a straight arm so just make sure that your nail polish is sticking out and I put it pretty high up because I wanted it to be um, underneath the hat a bit so I sewed it on about the same row that the top of the nose is sewn on that way it's it's kind of underneath the hat a little bit maybe even a row up higher so that's what I chose to do with the other arm because so I wanted the hat to cover where I was sewing And I mattress stitch under it because mattress stitching it the way I just did makes the arm pop up. So I kind of want the arm to be held down close to the body. So I'm mattress stitching in this row and out from the armpit to pull the arm back down. And then I still go down into the body a little bit because even though that pulled the arm down 
it really still likes to stick up. So as I'm weaving, I'm just going down the arm as I go. Just try not to pull too tight. So um, the hat takes some time and then the hair and everything else. So that will be in the next chapter. So I will see you in chapter three. Hi guys, welcome back to chapter three. So this is kind of where we left off. Um, I just noticed my arm is puckering a little bit there. So, um, we are going to be doing the hat today and finishing everything else off. So get whatever color your hat's going to be and um, I'll meet you right back here. So I am using this flex that we talked about at the beginning of the video, this flex, I, again, not really too sure who makes it, but it's super duper pretty with all these little, well, I mean, this is what, this is what the yarn looks like after you've made it. It's got all these little flexes in it. It's super duper pretty. So I'm going to use that again for my, my hat. And then this blue is going to be for the bottom part, the very end of the hat and this is again loops and threads uh bright sky blue that's the color anyway start with a magic ring of six single crochets Your first round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. And the reason why we're not sticking to, you know, the norm is because I wanted to, I need a point on the top of this hat. So that's our one single crochet. And then the next stitch gets the increase. So two single crochets in the same space and repeat all the way around for a total of nine stitches. This stuff is not the easiest to work with. It splits easily, but the outcome is fabulous. So I'm just tying a knot back here just to kind of keep it doing what it's supposed to be doing. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to, th to uh, 12 stitches.
So because I did the beginning not traditionally, we're not going to increase by six every row. We're going to increase by three. So we're going to do everything three times. So for the next three rows, we're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So I'm just going to count to 36. That's my 36 stitch, so that's my three rows. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 15 stitches. That's number one, two, and three. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So for the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches, so I'm just going to count to 45. So your next increase round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 18 stitches. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So I'm just going to count to 36. So your next few rounds, we're going to start adding rounds together because as you can see, it's going to take a, the hats a while. So, <coughs> excuse me, your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring you to 21 stitches and then I want you to do two rows after that of one single crochet in each stitch. The same thing we've kind of been doing. Um, all this will be on my screen so you can just pause it and just work away. So. This next round, like I said, is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So your next couple of rows is going to be six single crochets and an increase, followed up by one single crochet in each stitch. This will bring you down to 24, or up to 24 stitches.
Your next couple of rounds is going to be seven single crochets and an increase, bringing you up to 27 stitches, followed up by one single crochet in each of those 27 stitches. So your next couple of rounds is going to be 8 single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 30 stitches and then I want you to follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 30 stitches. So your next round is going to be 9 single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 33 stitches and then I want you to do one single crochet in each of those 33 stitches. So your next round is going to be 10 single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 36 stitches and then I want you to follow that up with one single crochet in each stitch. So we're going to start doing things a little bit differently now. Now we're going to do two rows of increases and one row of single crochets. Two rows of increases, one row of single crochets. So we're picking up the pace a little bit. So um, I'm probably still going to put this all on your screen just to make it a little bit quicker. So this next round is going to be 11 single crochets and an increase. So we'll do this just one row here and then the next rounds will be two together. Okay, so your next rounds following this will be 12 single crochets and an increase, bringing you up to 42 stitches, followed up by one single crochet in each of those 42 stitches. So this is what you should have at this point. So the next three rows are going to be on my screen. The first one is going to be 13 single crochets and an increase, bringing you up to 45 stitches. And then you're going to do 14 single crochet increase, bringing you up to 48 stitches. And then one single crochet in each of the 48 stitches. So all this is going to be on my pause screen, and I will see you on the other side.
So we're just about done. Next few rows is going to be 15 single crochets and an increase to 51, 16 single crochet increase to 54, and then one single crochet in each of those 54 stitches. If I didn't do it this way, this would be taking forever. So we're just about done. I know I said that last time. Your next two rows before we switch to this blue color um, is going to be 17 single crochets and an increase and then 18 single crochets and an increase. So all the counts will be on there. Um, no one single crochet row. Um, we're going to switch to blue after the two next two increases. So I'm on my last stitch where I have to put in my two stitches. I've put in my one stitch because this is my increase one. So I'm not going to finish that last stitch with my green. I'm going to finish it with my blue. So take your marker out because we're going to slip stitch and we're going to chain. So slip stitch into this next stitch and chain one. In the front loops, I want you to do one half double crochet only in the front loops because we got to, this is going to be the brim of the hat, so it has to be done in the front loops. One half double crochet in each. So I am all the way back around using only my front loops. So I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this first chain and I'm going to chain two. So we're going to start the shell stitch. Uh, so it's just five double crochets in the same space and then skip two stitches. So we're not starting in this space here. We're going to go right over to the next stitch, yarn over, and put five double crochets into this first stitch. We don't chain or anything, but we're going to skip two stitches and into the next one we're going to put five double crochets. And we're going to continue to do that all the way around. So skip two, five double crochets.
So I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this first chain and I can fasten off. You need a sewing tail. It needs to get sewn to the head so you can either do it from here, which means you're going to have to, to somehow weave your blue up here. So you have to kind of sew it on in this area or get your green to sew it on in this area. I am using my green. It's completely up to you. So this brim is a little different from my first brim because I did the skip to and my first hat I did not. I slip stitched in those two stitches. So um, this one's a little stiffer. This one's going to be a little bit more flowy, which I like better, which is why I changed the design. So, turn my hat around. It's hard to see mine, but I mean, you know what's going on with yours, so. So, now that our hat is done, we can kind of set this aside. Well, actually, we can't really set it aside. We've got to glue things onto it. So, you can either use some really strong glue that you have. I'm going to use my glue gun for this next part. So whatever you're using, get it ready. So I've got a few buttons. <laughs> I got these on Amazon. They're just little hearts. I think they're super cute. You can sew or glue. I'm gluing all mine on. These cute little hearts. I think they're adorable. So they're going on my hat for sure. And then all these little flowers that I that I used when I made my doom buggy. Those are all going on the hat. So I did that for my other one and I will show you all the little, I still got to add these hearts too. Um, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for my glue gun to, um, I'm just going to take some of these out. While I'm waiting for my glue gun to heat up, we can do the hair. So my hair is going to be gray because my hair is going to a specific person and uh, so I'm just doing the hair to match them. Let's set this aside. Let's get our glasses. Let's get our hair. So these are my glasses. This is what I showed you at the beginning of the video. These are pet glasses you can find on Amazon. So all you got to do is stick the arms in wherever. And then they hold pretty tight. And I don't push them all the way back either. So there's my glasses. And they're the perfect size. So um, I'll put that picture up so you can find. I'm not, I'm not going to link any of this stuff. Um, I'm just putting the pictures up. You can go find it because my website's, I'm Canadian. So um, I'm going to end up linking Canadian stuff. And that's not going to do you any good because, you know. You're all from other countries, so I'm just going to post post the picture, and uh, you can go type in that the details and find them, but these are just pet glasses. I'm sure if you just typed in pet glasses, this is what you'll get, and they come in all these different colors, so I've got green, um, yellow, these are pink, not that you can really tell because i got a pink shirt on, and then the blue is one. I have for my other guy so um, now that that's on we're gonna do the hair so you can make the hair as long as you want 
So initially, let me get my other doll. Let me get everything out of the way here. Get my other doll. So the hair is pretty long on her because this is going to my sister. And she used to have really long hair and I braided it. But it goes down like almost down to her legs. So you can, you can, and this is a chain 35. So each pieces, I chained 35 and then I braided those chains together and did the same thing for the other side. That's how I got these chunky looking braids. So I only have to do one braid for this chicky and I have to do it in gray. So I'm going to make, and she has long hair too. So I'm going to just do three strands of chains, three chain 35s and then I'm going to put those together and I'm going to kind of sew it to here so that it drapes around the front. Just one gray braid. That's what I'm doing for hers. So while I'm waiting again from a heat gun, I mean if you're not waiting for your for a, a, a gun to, to warm up, um, a glue gun to warm up, then you can just uh, glue your stuff on and then come and do this part with me. So, um, one of these ends is going to have to have a longer end on it for sewing. You can use any hook you want. Actually, I'm going to go up and hook. I'm going to use a six millimeter to do a big chain. This is a Craft Smart light gray. So it's a little on the thicker side as Craft Smart usually is. So you're wondering why it's so long is because you do lose some length when you start to braid. So you can fasten off the first, the first one. So start with the tail, end with the tail. And I'm going to make two more because I'm only doing one braid. So once I have all three of mine done, I tie it to something. You could probably just use tape on a table or something. Mine's tied to my camera stand. <laughs> and then I'm just going to braid. So you can do it as loose or as tight as you want. So once you get down so far, you're just going to kind of make a knot. And kind of wiggle this down. So it's a big sloppy braid. I'm just going to cut off at this end a little bit. Untie my... So I just want to make a knot at the beginning of this as well. Could have done that before you start braiding. And then I took all of these 
and put them into her head. So I attached it to her head, but my camera died, my card filled up, and everything just went awry. But anyway, it's attached to her head. So the braid can either be just hanging down in front, or the braid can be just down through the back. So it's pretty loose braid. You know, you can kind of pull it out like you would your own hair to make it thicker if you wanted to. Just a big thick braid. So My glue gun should be ready to go. I'm going to get my hat and I'm going to get my plastic water bottle because I'm going to put it in my hat <laughs> as far as I can get it to go. Um, for gluing this stuff on, I just don't want it to stick. I don't want my hat to stick. So, I don't know what's going on here. My glue gun is a very messy glue gun. So go ahead and decorate your hat. I'm going to meet you back here when you're done and um, we'll get it sewn to the head and then that'll be about it. We'll be done this project. So I got a whole package of these from Amazon. I'll put the thing up now. So I'm just going to take one out. And I just used orange yarn you can use whatever you want. I just used orange yarn to make a necklace with because the necklace stuff that I have, I have a leather necklace thing, but it is so, it is so long and I don't want to cut it because it's leather. So I just did that for a necklace. I don't need that. So I'm going to put this necklace on and then we'll get the hat done. All this is going to be up underneath the hat. You're not going to see it. Just make sure you've got it where you want it. mine hang down quite a bit I think. Once you've got it where you want it you can just tie these in a double knot and then weave the rest of them in and nothing's gonna be able to pull your necklace off if you know a kid's yanking on this or whatever. All this will be up underneath the hat you're not gonna be able to see it. And then the final, the final thing is to sew this hat on. Some of my glue stuck to my bottle, so it's a good thing I used my bottle.
So you can sew this hat on any way you want. I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna kind of tack mine down. So I'm gonna use some green. So for starters, I'm gonna use these back loops back here because I wanna start in a place that's not gonna be well looked at because I'm gonna meet back up with this guy and I'm gonna tie knots. So while I'm back here, I'm just gonna tack it down using these back loops just for a few stitches and then I'll uh, just go up top. So I'm just going to, again, do what I just did on the other side. I'm using these loops. That's when I'm going to tie my knots, my double knot, and then weave. So this hat shouldn't just fall off, but you should be able to easily take it off if you don't want it on there, which you know, that's completely up to you. But I don't know what gnome is a gnome without, <laughs> without a hat, but, you know, to each their own. There we go. So the back of this is not going anywhere. The front of it, you can still move it around and do, you know, There we go. That is it. I have to layer down just so you can see. But that's our little gnome with our feetsies. <laughs> this is the best part of the whole project. Anyway, this was super duper fun. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you in the next video.